What's up guys, your agent Tyler Wayrung here and today we're going to walk through how to run the numbers on a Burr property. We're going to talk about how that's different from how you run the numbers on a flip and a traditional rental and how you need to factor in for the cost of capital, whether you're using a HELOC, private money, hard money, whatever that is, kind of how to factor that in, but also make sure that when you're done with the property, unlike a flip, you want to make sure this property still cash flows at the end of the day and that's the part I think a lot of people miss. So we're going to run through the differences between all three different scenarios, whether you're flipping, buying a property the traditional way as a rental, and how to run the numbers as a burr. So with that, let's jump in. All right, guys, so before we jump in, just a quick couple caveats. Um, I am going to use generalities here just to show the concepts. These calculations may have to be adjusted for your market and your goals, but I think overall this will give you an idea of how to think about the process. So let's first start out with the flip. All right, so when flipping, we're going to start off with the typical ARV times 70%, otherwise known as the 70% rule. So we got ARV times 70%. Also, guys, I'm going to be using a hypothetical uh, house here for um, number's sake. We're going to call it the ARV on this house is going to be 100000 It's going to need 20000 in rehab, and at the end of the day, it's going to rent for $1,000 a month. Um, all very simple numbers, but very realistic. Um, I think you guys know my math gets worse when I'm on camera, so um, I did this to, to help myself out. All right, so back to the flip. This is uh, We're going to do ARV times 70% less repairs. Also can't spell good on camera. Uh, we're also going to back out the cost of capital. I'm just going to use that as COC here. That can be you know, what you're going to be paying in hard money, whether you're going to be paying back a private money notes, or if you're taking out a HELOC, what those monthly payments are going to be. All right, I see a lot of people forget about this stage and just back out repairs before they come up with their uh, max allowable offer or MAO, but you need to factor in cost of capital and another big miss is utilities. Now, especially in the winter months, um, even in the summer, matter of fact, um, these bills can add up, especially if you're going to be in a project for approximately six months. I always run my numbers at at least six months, and you'll, we'll talk about more about that uh, reason why when we look at the Burr model. But this is essentially how you come up with flip numbers. All right, so if we're going to look at this deal here, 100,000 at the 70% rule, that gets you to 70. So at 70K, um, we said before this property needs 20,000. So now we're down to, uh, after repairs, we're down to 50. And then um, for cost of capital and utilities in this example, we're just going to use $5,000. That has some basic assumptions in there, but like I said before, um, we'll just use um, uh, common math here. So this would be a 45K max allowable offer if we were going to flip this property and be able to sell it for a hundred thousand only putting twenty thousand into it paying back our cost of capital utilities will typically turn a good profit at these numbers all right so now let's look at a rental the big difference between when flipping in a, a rental when just analyzing the deal is for starters, you don't care about the ARV, right? What a property's worth may go into the financing, but for most cases, you're worried about the rent. And so when I'm analyzing a flip, I look at the rent divided by 1.2%. So this is my take on the 1% rule. If you, if you use the 1% rule in your market, you can just change that to 1%. I need a little bit more meat on the bone for deals to make sense in my market, so I use the 1.2% rule. So when you divide uh, the rent times that, that gives you the loan amount that you can have on the property, and it's typically still cash flow okay. Again, you wanna check your market, what kind of rates you're getting, um, and adjust accordingly, but for this example, we'll use my market because it's convenient, right? All right, so we're gonna use that to come up with the max, the loan amount that we want to have on this property, but then we need to back out repairs. Oops. All right, so you have to trust me on this math. I ran it beforehand. So um, on 100,000, or excuse me, $1,000 of rent divided by the 1.2% will give you 83K. And then if we back out repairs, we're gonna be at 63 Oops, 63K. Uh, and then for a rental, 
that's where you're going to be for your max level offer for a rental. You're going to be right at that 63K number because once you do the repairs, you'll be able to start getting that rent and you'll be able to cash flow, uh, you know, all else equal. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the Burr model. And as you can see, it starts out just like the rental model, but there is a lot of uh, similarities between both of the two that we'll jump into now. So like we said before, we first start out looking rent times 1.2%. That gets us to 83K. All right, so now here's where it gets a little bit different. So since we have to plan for the refinance and making sure that we're able to get our money back out, now's where we have to consider what the max amount we can be into this deal for is. And for us, we can get loans at 80% of ARV. If you can only do 70% or 70, you plug that number in this step. So we say, is this number, the money, the max that we can pay, is it less than or equal to 80%? of a r b all right if it's not less than in this case so our a r b is a hundred thousand we can be max into this property for eighty thousand because that's the max the bank is going to give us back at the end of the day so you either pick the whatever one's lower here so if this was 75 obviously we use our 75 number but if it's 80 uh 80 percent we have to go with that so we cross out the 83 we turn that to 80K in this example, and then we continue on the same way that we did with the flip. So now that we have our 80K, um, now we're gonna back out repairs, cost of capital, and utilities. So repairs, like we said, that's 20K. Now we're down to 60. This is a real test on my uh, public math here. And then a minus the uh, cost of capital and utilities. 5k so now we have a $55,000 max allowable offer so basically what this means is when we uh, we purchase it for 55 we you know pay back our lender and that can be private money hard money uh, you know a HELOC um, we typically borrow private money from investors like you and me we pay eight or nine percent back to them, and these are folks that just want to put their investment in something more secure than the stock market or the other speculative investments. And um, so, those are the numbers we use. But you want to plug in whatever yours is. If you're using a HELOC, use the monthly interest rate there. But uh, it, it basically is saying, you know, we pay this amount, we pay our uh, lender back, we pay for the rehab funds. And now we're into this property for 80,000. So when a bank appraises it, and ideally it hits this mark, they're able to give us a loan back for 80,000 that we then give back to our lender, pay ourselves back for any interest we paid, and now we're into the property for nothing. And we already checked again that if we have a property at $80,000 loan on it, it's still gonna cash flow at the rental amount that we talked about before at $1,000 a month in this example. So those are the factors that you need to consider and to make sure that you kind of think ahead. You kind of have a blend of the two different calculations that most folks are used to and to really make sure at the end of the day that all this is worth it and you don't keep yourself in a situation. So even if the market dips and this 100K turns to 90K, you need to have a plan in place. Make sure your private lenders know what happens in that scenario. Make sure you have funds to pay back that HELOC and hard money, you better be on the ball because they don't mess around. So um, for us with private money, we typically do one to two year renewable notes in a worst case scenario. We have to just keep making them that monthly interest payment. We're able to do so, it's covered by the rent and we just make sure we communicate well around that. But guys, I hope that was helpful to at least give you some perspective on how to think about the numbers when you're going through this how a Burr analysis is different from a rental property and a flip, but how you need to kind of be aware of both. The last thing I'll leave you with is, if you're not already sold on having a, a property that you have no money into, here's the other benefit. All right, so we said before, when we analyze it as a flip, you're looking at a $45,000 offer. When you're looking at it as a rental, you're at a 63, and as a Burr, you're looking at a $55,000 max allowable offer. So when you're out there competing, you know, you, you're able to pay typically a, a pretty good amount more than flippers. 
And um, you are less than a typical landlord going out to purchase a property traditionally. But the big thing is most of those types of landlords aren't looking to do any significant rehab to the property. Now I'm speaking in generalities, but more often than not, you're going to be competing more with the flippers than you are going to be competing with other people looking to buy rental properties. So if you can pay $10,000 more in this case, you're going to be in a better position to win more deals and to get more of these under your belt than the people who just have one exit strategy by flipping. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this helps you get out there and take action, start writing some offers, analyzing deals, and hopefully get some of these under your belt. But if you have any questions about how I got to these numbers, drop them in the comments below. Or if you have a specific situation you'd like my thoughts on, drop them there as well. But as always, Tyler Wayrung, we'll catch you next time.